Hi, I'm Dave. This is TJN, the Jesus Network. It is time to change the planet, and I love to pray. And it's really, really nice to meet other Christians that really love to pray and really know the power of prayer and what it can do and how it can change your life. On the phone with me right now is Jim Moore, and he's the director of the Salem, Oregon House of Prayer. Jim, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, visiting with us here on the Jesus Network. Thanks for having me, Dave. So let's talk about the Salem House of Prayer. It's been underway for a, a while now. What's going on there? Well, we are a 24-hour day prayer ministry. Uh, our goal is to cover the region with 24-hour day prayer. Um, we launched uh, 24-hour prayer about uh, almost four years ago on 8808. Uh, we went nonstop for nearly four years. We just recently had to... Uh, push the pause button on 24-hour prayer. We're going about 12 hours a day right now uh, until we build up our base of um, people who will are willing to sign up and come out and pray. Um, but it's just a fascinating time to be alive. God is doing wonderful things in the prayer movement um, all over the world and right here in the uh, in the Willamette Valley. So tell me what, what the result you're seeing of your prayer. You're seeing prayer move mountains. Yeah, I think, you know, the greatest uh, result that that we see and the result that we hope for is is changed hearts. Uh, you know, you opened up by saying how much you love to pray, and, and that to us is the greatest testimony. Um, someone asked what's the, the greatest thing that you can get out of prayer, and, and prayer is not um, so much a means to obtain things from God as much as it is to lay hold of God himself and to become a lover of Jesus, to become someone who loves to spend time with him, uh, is to us the greatest uh, reward possible. The Scripture says He is our exceeding great reward. And most people long for a deep relationship with the Lord and uh, struggle uh, coming to that place. And we have the promise, draw near to God and He'll draw near to you. And so the mountains, I think, that we see that thrill us the most are when hearts are changed and people say, you know, I used to struggle coming to prayer I used to run from it, now I run to it, now I love to be with Him. I understand that my life is about knowing Him, and everything else flows out of that. You know, Jim, a couple of things you've said that really uh, touched my heart are the word relationship and drawing close to Jesus. Now, one thing that God put on my heart is, if you want to have a good relationship with your spouse, and you never talk to your spouse, you're not going to have a good relationship, and it's the same way with God. Right. Yeah, absolutely true. <clears throat> we have a tendency to think that it applies uh, to other areas and aspects of our life and not to the Lord, uh, because He's so gracious and, and good. And, but it really is true. Salvation is free. Um, the cross paid for our coming to the Lord and our entrance into the kingdom. Um, but what we do with that and the relationship that we have with the Lord is, is largely... He really has put the ball in our court. It's largely up to us. Uh, again, the promise in the book of James, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. In other words, he's saying, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, my part of this relationship, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm committed. I'm all in. Um, I am devoted to you. I mean, if you think about the fact that God can be in each individual that's taken away from another, he is devoted to me 24 hours a day. We walk together, and, and I'm created to know him. Uh, it is the highest relationship that we have. And it's not a pretend one. It's not all by faith. I mean, a, a large portion is by faith, but we get to, to walk with this God, and we get to uh, relate to Him and feel Him and have experiences where He gives us communication through His Word or through dreams or through other people. It really is a vibrant relationship that we can have if we'll just pursue it. And what, what would you say to people that may have a hard time praying? They say, I don't know how to pray. Um, I run out of words. I, I just have a problem with it? What would you say to motivate those people? I would say, uh, first of all, don't give up. You know, David uh, said, uh, gave a kind of a template, I think, in uh, Psalm 27.4, not to be confused with 24.7, uh, Psalm 27.4, where he said, now this is a king who, um, of all of us, would, would be busy, and that's uh, one of our big problems today, is we're just busy. Oh, huge. And um, of all the responsibilities he had, I mean, he had just, you know, let's not even talk about multiple wives, you know, and you know, finances of the kingdom. And this guy had all of the reasons in the world not to be closely connected to the Lord, and yet here's what he said. He said, one thing have I desired of the Lord. That is what I will seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord 
and to inquire in his temple. Now, there are three things there that he said that I think are the key to developing a history of intimacy with God. And number one, he said, I desire it. So you've got to have desire. And that desire is not enough. It has to lead to the next step. And if you don't have desire, if you ask the Lord, put the want. I want to want you. <laughs> I want to, to want to be with you. He can give us even that initial desire. So one thing of a desire, that will I seek. It has to go to where you begin to do something. Desire that isn't acted upon uh, is dead. It's like faith without works. Pr- uh, pursuit is the proof of real desire. So David, the busy king, said, I desire this. I will pursue this. And then number three, longevity. There are some things, Dave, that are worth doing all the days of your life. And this is at the top of that list. He said, I will dwell in that Lord. I will approach him. I will gaze on his beauty every day of my life. So that's the threefold core that we encourage people. Get desire. Ask God to put that desire in your heart. Act upon it. Schedule it. Put it down on paper. You know, you're going to you're gonna do it good some of the time. You're going to fail some. But 50% of any commitment is better than 100% of no commitment. Don't let that, that stop you. Just make that, you know, desire and pursuit. And then number three, make it a lifetime commitment. Make a covenant with the Lord. I'm going to do this. All. I'm not going to try this and see if it works. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And if you don't quit and you follow that pattern, you will develop a personal history of God. Now, you're calling to us from uh, Salem, Oregon. What are the plans now for the House of Prayer in Salem, Oregon? started in 2008. You've had the scale now down to 12 hours a day. Is that right? That is correct. What are your plans going forward? Well, what we basically have are 84 prayer meetings a week, you know, 12 two-hour prayer meetings a day. That's 84 a week. And we were staffing those with... um, Many of them just one or two people per set praying, and we were getting the job done and could have continued doing that. But prayer is so much more enjoyable when it is done with a group of people and accompanied with people. And so what we're, what we're attempting to do is to scale back and build teams to where these sets that we do uh, will eventually fill up again all 84 of them, but they'll be done with a team ministry kind of a paradigm. makes it easier on everybody that way. Instead of having one or two people that are, you know, praying two to four hours a day and really getting burnt out. You've got a group of people that are coming in and supporting each other. So uh, as far as the House of Prayer goes, our goal is to build back up. But, but ultimately, 24-hour prayer is not the big goal. The big goal is, is impacting human hearts. So we trust that the Lord will build uh, the hours according to how He wants. We don't want to be a servant to that. Um, you know, our big desire is to call forth people who have a passion to intercede and to know Jesus in a deeper way. So we see it building, we see it growing, and really what we're really encouraged about, even more than our own house, is the fact that God is raising up houses of prayer all up and down the I-5 corridor, all over the state of Oregon. We're right in the midst of launching a, um, a new ministry called uh, 24-7 Oregon, whose goal is to unite uh, all kinds of prayer ministries, whether they are houses of prayer or church prayer meetings, you know, home meetings and, you know, meetings at Starbucks, the predictable meetings that people have it and, and say, this is what's going on in Oregon in your state. This is, and make sure that we have 24-hour prayer on a statewide level. So we're, we're just excited that the prayer, the level of prayer going up uh, in, in our state and in our region and really all over the United States and all over the world, people don't realize how much prayer is increasing, and, and we want to make that um, known to them. How can people contact you? The people hearing this interview are listening to us from all over the world, so how can they contact you? Uh, our website is, is our, simply our name, uh, SalemHouseOfPrayer.org, and there's no .com, it's a .org. And then we have a Facebook account that can go to that as well. And, um, and that has our contact information, our phone number, and our address, and, and we're pretty easy to get a hold of. What do you need at the Salem House of Prayer? Well, currently, we just recently moved into a new building, and this is another whole testimony in itself um, that I don't, we won't probably take all the time to go into, but we moved into the building next door. We were located, we're in the heart of downtown Salem, which is in itself a miracle. Uh, we were initially, there was actually a law on the, the books of downtown Salem that said, you, you know, no religious organization could be downtown. And we challenged that, and it got overturned by a miracle of the Lord, and so now we've been there for a few years. And uh, we really have the favor of the city and so on. Um, But we moved out of our building next door into, get this now, into a bar 
that was once a place for, it was a gateway of evil to our city. If they go to our uh, website, there's a little video clip that, that takes them through a, a tour of our um, our new facility. So our need right now is the renovation of that facility. This is a place uh, that was used for, you know, well, there was some human trafficking, we believe, going on there. There was some drug use. I mean, there was just, from the testimonies we've heard of, of young people that have come, they say, you know, this is the stuff that was going on there. So God has taken a gateway of darkness, turned it into a 24-hour house of prayer, but now we're in the place where we have a lot of needs to try to renovate it. So we need workers, we need, um, of course, we need prayers, people who come, and worshipers and musicians. And our goal is to have a 1,000 people a day uh, in the house of prayer praying in the city of Salem, state capital, affecting the government of Earth and the government of Heaven. So we need worshipers and prayers and uh, carpenters and it's kind of like building Nehemiah's wall. We kind of need it all, and of course, the, the overarching need for money. <laughs> Amen. And the scripture that uh, God's put on my heart right now is, Jesus said, is there anything impossible for me? Is there anything impossible for God? So I challenge yeah. you that uh, as you're listening to this interview and uh, if you're living in a country, a city that you feel is just overwrought with corruption and sin, uh, remember those words, nothing is impossible for me. And, mm-hmm. and prayer, faith, there's something about faith and prayer. When you combine those two together and when you pray and when you don't give up and you believe, you believe in your heart that, that God can do the miraculous, can do the impossible, then he'll do things like turn a bar into a turn a bar and turn a place where people were sex trafficked into a house of prayer. Nothing Amen. is impossible. No, nothing is impossible. Well, Jim, bless you for everything you've done. Uh, we want to keep in touch with you. And, and uh, I know in some ways it's been, uh, you guys are, are really forging forward. You've been doing this since 2008. And uh, we really support you and, and pray with you. And we ask the people all over the world, uh, pray with the Salem House of Prayer. And, and also consider having a house of prayer in their city, in their country, in their municipality, in their house, because uh, the time is ripe for prayer. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, Dave, the government of God is initiated and implemented through prayer. That's how God moves. And there is no city. I love what you said. There's no city that God can't take. Uh, he just is looking for a people who will believe and partner with him. So, yeah, we I say a big amen to what you just said. Amen. And remember, remember what Jim just said. They were in a city where it was against the law to have a, a house of prayer, a religious institution in the city. What did God do? Overturn the law. Yep, absolutely. And that, and and Jim, what I'm hearing a lot of these days is talk about the kingdom of God and the authority in the kingdom of God prevails. And in your situation, it's prevailed. And I just want to encourage. I just feel like we need to encourage someone listening that uh, there's nothing that's affecting your city, your municipality, that God cannot overturn anywhere, even in the Middle East. I'll even go a step further, Dave, that, that it is his intention to do that. The, the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. It is inevitable that your city will fall into the hands of God. It's just a question of time and partnership. So it, it's not whether he can do it or not. It's just where are we at in the process. And once you set your heart to the inevitability of my city becoming the kingdom of the Lord, the kingdom of this world becoming the kingdom of my Lord and of his Christ, then it changes your outlook. Then it's a, a question not of you doing it, but just partnering with the process that he's already engaged in for so many years. And just be a part of it. And once you are, yep. you never want to go back. You never want to go back. You never want to go back. <laughs> Jim, bless okay. you, and, and keep doing what you're doing. All right, Dave. Thank you very much. Jim Moore is director of the Salem House of Prayer. I'm Dave Adams. This is TJN, the Jesus Network, because all together, all together across this planet, it's time to change the planet.